Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today this is episode 8 of my React.js beginners course and in this video I'm going to introduce one of my favorite topics that I like to teach when I'm teaching beginner React which is the React Router DOM library. So for those who don't know, um, React Router DOM is a library that is widely used for um, creating routes in your React apps and um, it's really one of the coolest things and easiest things to learn in the beginning. So um, I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it because it would help support the channel, it would help push the videos to more people. And I'm really putting a lot of effort into this course, so I would be really grateful if you guys could do that. So with that in mind, if you want to check out all the code for the video, it will be all in the description. And let's get into the tutorial. <laughs> Okay, everyone. So like I mentioned in this video, we're going to be working with React Router DOM. This is one of my favorite episodes. Um, whenever I make anything related to React, uh, like any course or something like that, I always like to explain React Router DOM because I am 100% sure that um, if you started watching this course um, and you've been working on your own as well, you probably um, thought to yourself, how can I make this have multiple pages, right? In a normal HTML website, um, you would just create multiple HTML pages like files and just link them in a inside of one of your uh, one of your main HTML file. But in react, you can't do that. Because like I mentioned in the beginning of the course, um, there's only one HTML file called index.html. And all the app is inside of here. And if we had to create multiple HTML files for every single time we went on another, another page, it would go against uh, what React really does. Because one of the issues with having multiple HTML pages and navigating an app like that is that every time you move a page into a different page in your website, you would have to download the HTML file for that specific page. With React, it downloads all of the JavaScript inside of one HTML file, and um, that's basically that. That's the whole point, right? It will literally um, make it more efficient and faster for you to navigate. So, with React, what we would have to do is actually install an external library called React Router DOM. So, this is the main routing library for React, and um, this is where like every app will include this because this is how you do routes in React. So in order to install this, you have to open up a new terminal, um, differently from the one that is currently running um, your application. And over here, uh, you'll just run npm install. And you just put react router DOM, just like this. Then you press enter, it should install the library really quickly, uh, it shouldn't take at time at all. And now that the library is installed, we want to be inside of our like app component, the one we are right now. Uh, this is the outermost layer of our app, because how we want to structure a project with React Router DOM is very different from uh, a pro what we've seen so far. So in order to get this started, I need to import some stuff from the React Router DOM library. So I'm going to say import from React Router DOM, just like this. And basically, what we want to import is a couple stuff. Um, I'll just write them over here and I'll go over what each of them is. The first thing is the browser router. And we can change, like since browser, browser router is a big word, we can also call it, uh, it's very common to do this, just call it router. And you can change the name of your import by using the S keyword over here. So we're just importing the same thing, but calling it router. Also, we want to import a component called routes, another called route, just like this. And for now, this is this is good. So what does this mean? Well, we have three components. This one is is a component we use to define exactly where in our app we want to have different routes. So this might be a foreign concept for those who've never used react before. But you can use routes as a way to only change a specific portion of your website. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that. But for now, just know that you need to specify where in your app you want to have all your routes, we're going to put it actually inside of the app div, we're going to put it right over here. And just put a router just like this, right? It's just a component, we're just calling it. Then we also need the routes component. And this is another one that um, for now, you just put it in just like this. And I'll explain it later on in the video why we need it. And finally, we have this route component, which is a component we're going to use 
It is self-closing and we, we're going to use it to define every route we want to have in our website. Let's do a pizza website. Like you can order pizza, right? Just as an example. So for that kind of website, we need to have a homepage and the path to the homepage would be just the normal uh, URL, right? So the, the URL of the website, in our case, is just localhost 3000. We don't want to add any routes at the end, right? So to define how our homepage would look like, we have we have we put the path of what this route will um, will be right and the path for the home page in a website is just an empty slash like this you may familiar may be familiar with this because of how it is in HTML as well um, this is just an empty like the, the main page of your website and then with uh, react Router Dom for each route we also need to specify an element and an element is just a component that um, will be rendered when you go to this route so let's create over here a folder in our project called pages. And this is where all the different pages of our website will exist. So for now, we're just going to create uh, the home page, just like this home.js. And this will be used for um, displaying the information in the home page. So we're just going to create a component like this, like we've been doing so far. And for now, the home page will just say, um, it will just be an h1 tag saying this is the home page right this is the home page now over here we need to import the home component so i'm just going to say home just like this it will automatically import as you can see and we just render it inside of the element now what you'll see is that immediately when i go over here it will already say this is the home page because we are actually in the home page right we set this to be the empty slash path, which means that we have it's showing right now. But just so you see exactly how React Router DOM works, if we went to another route, such as the profile page, it disappears because now we're not in the home route anymore. So it's not showing the home component. So you can see how cool this is, right? We can actually display different components or different UI depending on which route we are currently in, which is amazing. So now that we have our first one, we can actually start creating some more just as an example. So I'm going to create um, two more. Um, so you guys can see exactly how this works. Um, so one will be like, I don't know the menu, because like pizza places have menus, right? So it's just a page of the website where you can see the menu. And I would say like a contact page would be good as well. Uh, I don't know, many pizza places, websites have contact pages. So we're going to have three different routes in our app. Now to go to the menu, we would probably want to call the menu route, right? Call the route menu. And for contact, we'll put contact as well. And um, like I said, this path, it just means that if I want to go to the menu, I'll just put slash menu in my route, and it will go to there. So we obviously don't have a menu and a contact component. But I'll just copy and paste the home component twice and change the name. I'll make this into menu. And since I changed this, I also need to change the component name to, to menu. And I also change this one to contact and do the same thing to the actual component. Right now we have both the menu and the contact components. So we can just import both of them. Um, just like this, uh, we'll change this to menu. And we'll also change this to contact. And over here, we'll just import menu and import contact, just like this. Now, I want to differentiate um, the components, right, just so we know if it's actually working. So the home component says this is the home page. So the menu component should say this is the menu page. Same thing goes with the contact one, it should say this is the contact page. Um, just like this. Now, let's check to see if this whole logic is working. If we are in our app, we're in the home page. It's fine. But if I want to go to the menu page, I can just say slash menu, and it should say this is the menu page. Same, same thing goes to the contact one, you'll see that we're now in the contact page. Now, what if we do something like this, where we're no not in any of them? Well, it will just not show anything, we can actually make like a error page if we wanted to. Uh, the way you do it is you just as a last route, you can just add a new route. And the path is just an asterisk, you just you just give it basically an asterisk, 
and the element you pass, whatever you pass over here will be shown whenever you try to go to a route that is not any of this routes over here. And I don't want to create a separate component for it. You can do it on your own. I definitely do it for every website because it's good user experience. But we can also just, I don't know, pass the UI directly here. So I'll just put like a H1 tag that literally it just says, uh, you are not in a page. I don't know, for like 404 error, like page not found, I'll just say page not found. It's better page not found. And you'll see that now, if we're not in a page, it will say page not found, it doesn't matter which one we are, as long as we're not in one of the original pages, such as this one, um, it will show something like this page not found. Okay, this is all really cool. And this is basically it for react to dom. I actually have a more in depth tutorial on react to dom. I have like so many of them. Um, it's one of my favorite videos, like one of my most well performed videos. So if you want to check it out, I go over way more than in this one. The last thing I still want to show in this one is just how to navigate throughout the routes without having to manually change um, this thing over here. But if you want to check out more about react to dom, definitely check out my video on it, because I go over everything. But um, like I said, I want to show you guys how to navigate between the routes without actually having to manually change the route by clicking over here. So that would mean like having links and a nav bar. So the reason why that's that's important is because it will explain to you guys really, really what is this router and routes component, you guys might already understand what route is like each of them, like each of the route components basically just defines a new route. But why exactly do we have to have two different components over like on top of them, right? So this will I show you guys exactly what I mean, if I want to create what is known as a nav bar, right? Nav bar is just a little thing at the top of a website where you can click on links to navigate through the website. Well, to do that, I would have to be inside of the router, just like this, right over here. So I'd have to be inside of this, um, I would create, for example, a div, and put over here different links that um, I'll just write nav bar for now. Um, different links that navigate throughout the website. And you see that the reason why I didn't put this inside of the routes over here is because this routes component just tells you just tells react router DOM that you're going to describe like individual routes inside of it, right? This router component is different. This router component it is meant to tell react router DOM that whatever is inside of it can use it, the, the react router DOM functionalities. But that doesn't mean that they have to be an actual route. So routes is used to define all the routes, router is used to define where in your app, you want to have access to react router DOM stuff. Now, the reason why this distinction is important is because there's if you want to navigate throughout your website, you can use what is known as a link, which is a component that comes from react router DOM. And um, I'll show you guys exactly what this means. If I put over here a link like this, it would be similar to like an a tag in HTML. Um, but it's better for react Runner DOM because it's already built in. Um, and it has good compatibility with the library. So what we do is, for example, if I want to go to the home page, I'll just put a home over here. And I'll just put what is known as a two property, and we just put the route where you want to navigate towards if you click on this link, since it's the home page, we'll just put an empty route. And you'll see that this will now appear in our nav bar. Now I can do the same thing with um, all the other ones, I can just put a, a one for menu, and one for contact. So menu, contact just like this. And we'll have to change this to menu and this to contact, just like this. Now, there's a thing I want to mention to you guys also delete this nav bar thing, you can see that we have now the routes over here, and I can actually click on them. Like if I'm in the home page right now, if I click on menu, it will go to the menu page, if I click on contact, it will go to the contact one. So it's working, right? It's definitely working. But one thing you guys might have noticed is only this is changing. This is not changing, right? No matter what route we are in, it always has a nav bar. And we didn't actually put a nav bar in any of those components. Nav bar just exists above this. Well, because how React Router DOM works is we're basically telling React that this is part of a website and this is what is gonna change. So everything below the links, below the nav bar will change depending on which component we are in. But the route doesn't define if we show this because this is above the routes thing. So that's the distinction. And the reason why we need the router is because we can't access link 
as a component because link is part of React Router DOM. And like I said, everything related to React Router DOM has to be inside of this component. So if we try to put this outside of router, React Router DOM will basically tell us that like it doesn't work because you're not inside of a router. So we do have to put this inside. So this is kind of like this is kind of how you navigate through um, different pages. Um, I usually like to create a different like component just for the navbar and have my apps just like this, just have like a, a navbar component. Um, we'll say navbar over here. And just return the whole thing that we have over there. Um, this thing over here, we'll just copy this and put it over here. And also, since we're using link, we need to import link over here at the top. So we'll say import from React Router DOM, and we'll import the link component, just like this. And now it should be working. If we just came over here and said navbar, right? So this is how it would work. And this is how I usually write my websites. So um, I usually have a navbar. And this is kind of a structure of how I would actually structure a website if I was using React and React Router DOM. So you can see it still works works perfectly. And this is how you have routes in your website. This is basically it for this video. Um, I want to give you guys an exercise, but it's kind of complicated to make exercises with React Router DOM. Um, so what I would say is check out the React Router DOM official documentation or my video, my full on video on React Router DOM, because I do go way more in depth than in this video. Um, I do talk about some more complicated stuff. So the exercise for this video, although it sounds ridiculous is to actually watch my other video too, um, which is way longer than this one, or doesn't have to be my video, just watch any other tutorials that go over react, like more stuff about react Router DOM, or just read the documentation. But I am linking the tutorial up here at the top. So if you want to check it out, just go ahead and do it. And um, that's the exercise for this video. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm excited to bring more episodes to this course. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting two to three times a week and I'll massively appreciate it. And I see you guys next time.